Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon. I'm Shannon, and today I'm going to be reviewing Marvel's The Defenders, a Netflix original series which just premiered, so stay tuned. Developed by Netflix and Marvel Studios, The Defenders is a miniseries which follows a group of New York City street-level vigilantes made up of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. The series takes place after the events of Marvel's Daredevil seasons 1 and 2, season 1 of Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Starring Charlie Cox, Kristen Ritter, Mike Coulter, Finn Jones, Sigourney Weaver, and Rosario Dawson. Stanley also makes a cameo through an on-set photograph as NYPD Captain Irving Forbush. The Defenders is set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe alongside Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Punisher, and the other four Netflix series. Sigourney Weaver portrays Alexandria, the woman in charge of the ancient organization known as The Hand, who is described as more of an adversary than a villain. I didn't actually watch Jessica Jones until the day before The Defenders was released. Wasn't quite familiar with the character other than just a little bit of what I've heard here and there. I was only slightly familiar with Luke Cage and Iron Fist before I watched their Netflix series, so I was able to come into all three series with a fresh look and no preconceived notions. Daredevil was another story. My first introduction of the character was in the 90s when he wore the black and red costume with all the padding. Then again during his guest appearances on Spider-Man the Animated Series and of course the Ben Affleck movie, and I thought that was better than most people had. What brings these four heroes together? We open with Danny Rand, the legendary Iron Fist, in catacombs battling what appears to be a couple of hand ninjas and trying to help a man who ends up dying. We then join Jessica Jones, who passed out at the bar. Luke Cage is being escorted through a prison block by a couple of guards on his way to being released by his new attorney, Foggy Nelson. Following this, we join Matt Murdock, who's in his loft preparing for court and is about to pull off an $11 million win for a boy who is left in a wheelchair by a major corporation. For those of you who don't remember, Iron Fist ended with Danny discovering that the Hand had attacked his temple and slaughtered the monks there. Sigourney Weaver's character is established in the series right off the bat as a woman who has incredible resources and is dying with only months or even weeks to live. At this point, I'm about halfway through season one of Jessica Jones, so I'm not exactly sure where things left off with her. But judging by her scenes in The Defenders, she had a final showdown with Kilgrave and pretty much went public with her powers. We discover that Matt has given up the mantle of Daredevil and is currently focusing on a normal life. New York is hit by a 4.0 earthquake, which appears to have been created by the hand. Someone is killing people and a man known as White Hat hires several teens to go out at night and clean up the mess. This is what leads Luke and Danny to meeting for the first time and we get to see the two fight in a knockdown drag out street fight when Danny uses the iron fist to punch Luke and knock him across the alley. Jessica Jones gets arrested after a man she's hired to find commits suicide while being attacked by a hand assassin who ends up being the resurrected Electra. As she's being questioned by the detective from Luke Cage, Matt Murdock shows up and tells her he's her attorney. It's revealed that White Hat, which is a black man in an all white suit, Panama hat and snakeskin shoes, works for the hand. It's hinted at throughout the show that Sigourney Weaver's character is very old, but she isn't immortal. It's revealed that Alexandria has lived a number of lives and has died a number of deaths, but has continuously been resurrected and that she will do anything and everything to never die again. It's revealed in episode three that Stick is actually a warrior for Kung Lung 
and doesn't want the Iron Fist falling into the hands of the Hand. Claire has a much larger role in the series, appearing from the very first episode rather than halfway through the series like in the other shows. Claire introduces Danny to Luke, officially, and then the two begin working together or at least attempting to get to know each other. Both Danny and Jessica find their way to a corporation that's in the middle of everything. Then Luke also connects the dots to Midland. Stick makes his way to the dojo to find Iron Fist. Matt and Jessica both end up at the Midland Circle, just after Danny. Luke, Matt, and Jessica all show up at the same time to help Danny in his fight against the hand at Midland Circle. The four of them end up taking on Elektra and several members of the hand. So what did I think? I kind of wish Danny Rand would at least wear the yellow mask from the comics. It would balance things out a little bit more, but instead we get Matt Murdock in full costume as Daredevil and the other three in regular civilian clothing. Matt revealing himself to the rest of the heroes felt pretty natural. Though he tried to keep his identity as the Devil of Hell's Kitchen secret, he ultimately decided it wasn't right. Danny was originally the only one who thought the four should team up to take down the hand while the others aren't quite so sure which fits perfectly into their characters. For the most part, each of the main characters are independent and only accept help begrudgingly in their individual series and here. It felt natural the way they came together. It didn't really seem forced. I loved how Stick told Jessica to sit down and shut up. Jessica becomes at the last holdout of joining together as Matt, Luke, and Danny all decide it's in everyone's best interest to listen to Stick and stop the hand, while Jessica still sees herself as a lone wolf who doesn't want to accept that it's her fight too, which completely fits into her character. It's fitting that it was revealed that Alexandria was one of the monks of Kung Lun, along with Miss Gao, or Madame Gao, however you say her name, and is actually the founder of the hand. It gave more reason for the four heroes to come together. Danny and Luke seem to develop a bond, and when Jessica rejoins the group, it's an amazing moment as she throws an SUV through the restaurant the heroes were in, taking out Electra in the process. Jessica knocking Madame Chow out was funny as hell. Dick is, of course, as sarcastically funny as ever. The way Daredevil and Jessica fight together for the first time when Matt puts on the uh, suit is extremely fluid. And the back and forth between them afterward when Jessica looks at his suit and says that he looked better in the scarf and nice ears with Matt replying, their horns, is classic. The bond that's built between Jessica and Matt shows a strong friendship starting to form, while also a friendship between Danny and Luke also starts to form, but not in a way you would expect from two guys who are best friends in the comics. Though they may work together in this series, I don't see them becoming the heroes for hire that they were for years in the comic books. Jessica and Luke's relationship doesn't seem strained at all, but rather distant. In the comics, they marry and have a child, but with everything that's gone on between the two in this series and Jessica's personality, I don't see them settling down. The surprise twist in episode six wasn't much of a surprise other than the very last few moments with Electra. It was something I saw coming for a while, but it didn't make it that less shocking in the way it unraveled. Jessica Jones taking a beer from a passed out homeless guy on the Metro was awesome. Uh, throughout the series, Iron Fist isn't really a part of the Defenders. Instead, he's more like the damsel in distress. Even though he could hold his own, he still requires saving by Daredevil, Jessica, and Luke. The Hand needs Danny in order to unlock a door that contains the substance which gives them their everlasting life. In the seventh episode, Danny is forced to do battle one-on-one -on -one against Elektra while Matt, Jessica, and Luke have to take on the final three fingers of the hand. It's Colleen Wing who ultimately takes on Danny's role on the team and aids in the defeat of Madame Gao and the other two fingers. Elektra manages to trick Danny into igniting the Iron Fist in order to fight her, but then uses it to open the door to the substance, which again is something most people should have been able to know was coming from a mile away. We had received confirmation that the Punisher was going to be a part of this series. We just weren't told to what extent he was going to be a part of it. If you were hoping for some major Punisher action, I'm sorry to disappoint. He didn't show up at all, which was a real letdown. But the series was fairly good nonetheless. Overall, I would give it a 7 out of 10. What did you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Shannon for Comageddon. Take care, guys.
Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon for Come Again, where all geek culture collides.